I love arena polo. I love the intensity of it. There's just honestly nothing like it. It's up close and personal, very fast. It's a pretty amazing feeling. I can't explain it in any other way than intense. Welcome to the 2024 Division I Women's National Intercollegiate Championship Semifinals. We've got Texas A&M University taking on the University of Kentucky here at Virginia Polo Center in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Liam Lott, here with legendary II coach and player Cindy Halley. Thanks, Liam. This should be a very good game. University of Kentucky had a big win over Cal Poly in the semifinal, I mean the quarterfinals. They're playing one string of their own horses here. Senior Taylor Knackers is very experienced and backed up by a much improved Ava Nunes. And Grace Beck is just a spark plug of the team. She just really has a high energy and really um, tries so hard for every single play. And UK is not a stranger to winning this championship. They won this back in 2010. So they definitely the underdogs coming up against the defending champions, Texas A&M, the number one seed. But they haven't had a game yet. They got seeded number one and have had to wait until today to get their first game in. So to me, that's a little bit of a disadvantage. But they had back-to-back -back wins in 2018 and 2019. One last year, of course, they've got the legendary coach, Mike McCleary, coaching them. And a very well-balanced, experienced, strong team. Josie Dorsey is just an absolute offensive power. She's got a nose for the goal. 
and Kara and Olivia are very disciplined, um, consistent, level-headed, smart arena players. And Olivia, of course, made the winning goal in the shootout last year to bring home the championship for Texas A&M. See Olivia right there, just adjusting on the with the black helmet. All right, so here we got some rosters for Texas A&M. We got Josie Dorsey at number one, Kara Kennedy number two, Olivia Reynolds at number three, and we have Francesca Fellhaber as both a substitute or an alternate. And for the Wildcats, we have Jocelyn Gallegos in the two jersey, but Grace Beck will be starting at position number one. Taylor Knackers usually brings up the back door and Ava Nunes is in the middle at the two position. All right. And so we've got Mike Vanderwerken and Robert Linke Chow in the saddle as umpires. Third man today will be Ryan Saul. And they are starting out on a string of horses from Dardo Iglesias. You'll see a lot of that very distinctive DI brand on their left hip. So it always brings um, really nice horses to this tournament. Really appreciate all those horse providers making this possible. And he is providing, I believe, two strings to the women's side of the tournament. So everyone getting a chance to warm up here, feel out the arena. Again, Texas A&M has not been able to once the tournament starts, no one's allowed to stick and ball or play um, anywhere, just so there's no un, you know, unfair advantage to somebody having some advantages of you know, knowing somebody where they can go play or whatever. So they have been cooling their heels, exercising horses, helping other teams. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they can start out with the same kind of energy that Kentucky had um, in the corner final game. And Ryan Saul, who you see there in the saddle, is also a product of the Interscholastic Intercollegiate Program. He grew up in Ithaca, New York, and played on their high school team that was based at Cornell as well as going to Cornell. He's now currently a firefighter in Ithaca, but he is one of our best uh, arena II umpires, really level-headed. And of course, Robert has been doing this for a long time and does a lot of arena polo. And we've got Bradley Biddle also in the stands um, as a spotter, keeping an eye on things. He's our head arena umpire for USPA Umpires LLC. That's Grace Beck. You see it switched on to a Grace Beck there in the black helmet with the red band. She's also in the ROTC at University of Kentucky. We've got two players in this year's tournament, Zach Coleman for Texas A&M and Grace Beck for UK involved in the ROTC programs at their, at their colleges. Sure, I'm sure we'll have some last minute instructions from the umpires, usually just reminding everybody about procedural things, how to ask for a timeout. Um, don't just mount without permission. You're responsible for your mallet at all times. I know the speech quite well, um, but just kind of reminding everybody, hey, we're gonna be watching out for these things. Let's not make unnecessary calls. And also reminding them that if they, we, they try and, um, delay the whistle and if the if it's not a dangerous foul and the team maintains possession they're going to let the foul go so that the play can continue all right listen we got that speech done with though we got both teams getting lined up we got directions sorted out already ah there you go we have player introductions there goes josie dorsey Kara Kennedy at number two. And Olivia Reynolds. There you go. Grace Beck at number one there for UK. Ava Nunes at number two. And Taylor Knackers at number three. And five out of six of these players all played high school polo as well. 
All right, there you go. First ball of the day is bowled in. It's going to pop out towards the Kentucky side. There goes Grace Beck to pick it up, get it turned back around. She's going to leave it behind. She's backed up by Nunez there. Ava hooked on the play. Ball stolen away by Kennedy there for AM. Kara Kennedy working her way around. Winds up, shoots to goal just wide to the right side. It's going to pop out. And there's Josie Dorsey to follow that right of way up and put it off just wide to the right. Goodness, here comes Grace Beck to save the day there. A little bit, balls flip back. Josie Dorsey backs it to goal, doesn't get a hold of it. She's going to get back to it, try to get it turned back around now. Josie Dorsey trying to work her way through a lot of traffic there. She got it out. Josie Dorsey in the red zone. There she goes. Texas A&M finally getting that first goal on the board. Yeah, that's got to feel good for them since they haven't had that first game. It looks like Kentucky just needs to communicate a little more. Who's going to who? They're sort of all going right to the man with the ball. There you have it. We're back in play. Oh, and we got a whistle already stopping the play. So we'll just have to see if someone slid in front. Looks like it's going in Texas A&M's way. So I'm guessing it was a uneven ride off sliding in front out of this throw in. Oh no, it uh, was, it was, it was, yeah. a, it was an improper use of the mallet. That, that's an easy one right there. Couldn't yes, see from our is. angle, but yeah. All right, so we got a four here in favor of Texas A&M. Ball's in place. Josie Dorsey teeing it up. There she goes. She's going to walk up to it, put it up. Oh, too high. I think that was accurate, too. That was a good shot, but just too high. you got to put it up. That's the problem, or they'll knock it down. Yeah, the fours are really difficult to score, and there's been some discussion. There's a tournament condition of having penalty fours being two points, and we're certainly going to discuss that um, as a possibility for next year because they're just so hard to convert. Yeah, you'd almost rather have a spot hit a lot of the time. Yep. All right, so Kentucky gains possession. It's Grace Beck to take it to the boards here. She's going to leave it behind there. And it's going to be flipped back. Here comes Kara Kennedy to pick it back up for A&M. Kennedy goes through the corner, flips it into the goal. Look at that. And, of course, Kara Kennedy, no no stranger to any of this, playing high school polo with Houston, but also we've heard her name a lot in the uh, all the Houston, the U.S. Or, uh, women's handicap play down at Houston Polo Club. So she has a lot of experience both on the grass and in the arena. That was Ava Nunes to leave that ball behind. She's going to be followed up by Grace Beck. Grace Beck winds up, shoots to goal one time, just wide to the right. Gets back to it. Grace Beck trying to get it turned around here through traffic. Ava Nunes comes in to help her out. Nunes now on the run through the corner. Ava looking good right in front of goal. Saved at the last second. Look at that. Kara Kennedy comes in there for a &M, flips that ball away. Ava's going to get back to it, flip it back to goal. She's met on the play. Looks like that was Josie Dorsey to get it stolen away and take off to goal. Dorsey on a breakaway run there for a &M. Rebound pops back. She couldn't get a hold of it. Here comes Grace Beck to win the ride off, but look at that. Looks like Boo might have gotten back to it. Nope, it's going to be stolen away. Taylor Knacker is now for UK. Taylor takes it to the center, winds up, fires it away, and she's going to try to outrun the defenders and get it to go here. Breakaway run there. Knacker switching to the near side to avoid the defender. Leaves that ball behind. Here it'll be stolen away again by AM as Josie Dorsey leaves it behind. Ava gets there. Ava with an open back shot back down to the boards looking for Grace Beck, but Reynolds is going to get there first for AM. Olivia Reynolds, huge back shot all the way to the other side of the arena. First one there will be Ava again for UK. Ava, tail shots knocked down, and look at that. I think we got Olivia Boo Reynolds going to goal here for AM. Olivia shoots and puts it through. Great patience by Olivia. She's, I've known her. She started actually with me in second grade at Garrison Forest, and she's just, the, she's just, I always say, she's an old soul. She's just very, very steady, very wise, wise beyond her years, and that shows some patience there. Here comes Grace Beck for UK. She's going to hit it off down to the back wall, and it'll be picked up by Josie Dorsey. Grace gets back to it. Look at that. That's a goal. Grace Beck, that's a much-needed first goal on the board for UK. Yeah, they needed to just get something going, kind of settle the nerves. This, they know theirs is a strong team. They haven't had to play against them for a long time. I think they met them in the semis last year and fell to them. So they they have some redemption here. They want some redemption. There goes Reynolds out of the throwing. Looking for Josie Dorsey out in front. Perfect passing play there from Reynolds to Dorsey. Josie hits it just wide to the left side. She's going to get back to it on the wall here, try to get a turn back around for AM. 
Josie Dorsey works it around. She's got Olivia right in front. She's going to try to make her way past her nice and slow. Met on the play there by Grace Beck. They're going to catch her for that one. Yeah, sort of nothing nothing to lose there. If she gets away with it, she's got to break away. But these guys aren't going to let her get away with that. But now let's put them to the penalty line. Have them have, them have to shoot that 15-yard line. But Kentucky just needs to spread out and – and you know play their game and not be so worried defensively they're kind of clustering up around um around uh the hitter just spread out make everything simple all right so balls in place it's gonna be a penalty two from the 50 yard line undefended looks like we're gonna have reynolds approach it There she goes, Olivia, half swing, right down the center. Perfectly done. There you go. Fourth goal of the day, now on the board for Texas A&M. Well done, Boo. Just nice and steady. Nice little half swing. That's the way you get those twos in there. Yeah, just tap it on in. There we go. Ball's back in play. Grace Beck wins the throw in for UK. Hits it down into the corner. There's no receivers there. Josie's going to get there first. <laughs> Josie Dorsey gets the wall for AM, pulls it out, takes off towards center field. She's hooked on the play there by Taylor Knackers, followed up by, I think that was Kennedy out in front. And we've got a whistle. Yeah, we got taking it on the wrong side, I believe. Against David, a little right away infraction. She just had to stay near side there on that back shot. Here we go. Here's the replay. Yeah, make a little contact or go on the near side. I don't think she had time to make contact there. Yeah. So Texas A&M looking great, very relaxed, using, you know, using all three team members to, to work this ball around. So I don't think resting all week had any effect on them. They look very much the team that they are. It's interesting because when Josie was in high school, she had – a habit of just absolutely galloping full tilt at all her penalty shots. She, she felt like that was the best thing for her to do. And she was pretty darn accurate with them too. Even so for open goals? Yes, exactly. Oh. It, it was just like, it was, it was, it was an interesting technique and it worked for her, but now it looks like she's, she's changed up her technique to, to take a little more time at it. And it's equally as successful with her, with her converting that, um, that first penalty shot. So we've got a timeout. I'm not sure. It's, um, it's hard for us to see. It's probably a little tack adjustment. Hoping that's all it is. I don't think anyone took a coaching timeout. So again, both teams have the opportunity to take a coaching timeout, one per half. Talk to so the coaches can talk to their teams. They can make a substitution. So, but it's a little early in the game to utilize that. I like to try and save those for. You know, save them so you still have them in the tank if you need them, you know, closer to halftime. All right, there we go. Looks like we're back. We got Reynolds to approach that goal here. Oh, no. Just wide to the right. Lucky break there for UK. We've got, looks like Grace Beck to clear that ball out of danger. Fire it off down to the right board. She's looking to get it off to Knackers. Taylor Knackers shoots to goal one time and it's going to cross that goal mouth. Stolen away there. Looks like that was Josie Dorsey to hit it out of danger there for a and But we got another whistle on the play. I think that ball got hit up uh, too high on the sidewall. So I believe it's a change of possession. But you saw, I think yesterday I mentioned there's a uh, really sweet spot in the corner that you can hit the ball and that's exactly where Taylor hit that ball and it just drops right in front of goal unfortunately Taylor didn't have the board position so um at Texas A&M was able to clear that ball out of there but that's that's what you want to do make make life easy for yourself see so you see Jorge Vasquez there talking to his team Grace Beck's mom in the blue. Grace Beck started her polo up at Kelly Wells's Marlin Farm. And then when her family was in Wisconsin for a year, she played with Hillside for a year. So she knows Taylor uh, well through that program. 
Oh, looks like they're just having a throw in because someone went down. All right, there you have it. So we're back. Balls in play. It's going to be Ava to pull it out here for UK. She's going to leave it behind. She's backed up there. There goes Taylor Knackers with the back shot pass right back for Ava. Look at that. That was good communication there. Ava breaks down to the boards, picks it up, hook on the play. Balls left behind. I believe that was the final horn of the chucker. So, yep, there you go. That'll do it for chucker number one. Four goals to one on the board. Strong first chucker for A&M. We'll be right back after a quick break. You're watching the USPA Polo Network. the University of Kentucky. I'm a senior equine science major and a business minor. I thought we played well in our game. There are definitely things that we need to improve on like communication and just like being behind each other when we're going towards the goal and then also defensively. But overall I thought we played really well. I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, to get the win against Texas A&M I think we really need to play strong defensively like on our man as tight as we can. They're all, they have three solid, four solid players. So we just have to be really tight defensively and then capitalize on those opportunities when we get in front of the goal. Like we can't miss the shots that are right in front of the goal. Um, our team has grown both on and off the field, I think. We're a lot closer. Like we stayed, we left for the summer, came back for the school year, so we spent months together. But we've like developed a friendship off the field that I really think helps on the field. And we play really well together, communicate well together, and it's just easier now that we have the same people coming back. Um, my favorite horse from our string is probably Changa. She was donated by Gainesway this past year, and she's just really powerful mayor, like quick stop, quick turn. She outturns me sometimes. She knows the play so well. I think the biggest benefit is like the friendships you develop. So I have people like in this tournament here that I like knew in high school. So I first met when I was a freshman in high school, and I'm not super close with them, but we've stayed connected throughout those four years. And I think like in the future, if I see them in polo, we will still be like good friends. All right, welcome back to the Women's National Intercollegiate Championship Semifinals. You're watching the USPA Polo Network. We have University of Kentucky here taking on Texas A&M. We're about to enter our second chucker of the game. Texas A&M with a four goal to one lead on the scoreboard. Here you can see the brackets and get a little feel for how these two teams got here. So UK took down Cal Poly to get to the semis. USC Aiken took down SMU. UVA took down UC Davis. Now, so now in the semis, we have UK versus Texas A&M. This game, only one winner will go to the finals. Our other semifinal is happening at 1230. That's USC Aiken taking on UVA. So one of those, two of those four teams will meet each other in the finals on Sunday. Yeah, and the depth of, of this Division One was very apparent in the quarterfinal games. Uh, Cal Poly... Had a, basically both both Cal Poly and Davis hung in there for a good bit of time, and this were were outplayed um, when it all came down to it. But 
Uh, we're happy to have them kind of dip their toe into the Division I ranks. So we had seven teams in the women's division and five in the men's division. Six in the men's division. My mistake. So always good to have some West Coast teams enter into it. We'll see what K Kentucky can do this trucker to answer back. Yeah, there we go. We've got some Texas a and momentum built up for sure. First balls in play. It's going to be Taylor Knackers to get there. Taylor with a little near side back shot knocked down by Josie Dorsey for AM. Dorsey takes off towards the goal. It's just wide to the right side, but she's there to follow it up, pick up the rebound, and score. Easy goal there for Josie Dorsey. Takes it out of the throw in, no problem. Josie is a scoring machine. She loves, she is just. As I said, she's got a nose for the goal. She wants to get to the goal. She's very offensive minded. Speaking of, there she goes again, but we got a back shot from Knackers to thwart that effort. It's going to be picked up by Ava. Ava gets it turned back around for UK, takes off. She's got Reynolds all over her. Reynolds is going to clear. Ava gets back to that ball. Ava shoots from the two point line. Ah, bad luck into Reynolds' horse there. Turned around now by Dorsey. Dorsey. Flips it off to Kara Kennedy on the boards. Grace Beck all over here. Here, Grace Beck pulls it out. A little bit too far, though. It's picked up by. Looks like that's Dorsey again. Josie takes out Taylor Knacker, switches to the near side, just misses the goal there. It's going to rebound back. She's going to try to get back to it here. Dorsey picks it up. Ah, look at that. Yep, that's an easy call for the umpires. Taylor did a good job to follow that play and up the board. So probably just be a... We'll see if it's a spot or a center hit. Josie just could not turn back into that play. She just either had to either clear or make a, I'm not sure what she could do, maybe make a near side back shot, but she certainly couldn't turn back into that play. All right. So that one's going up to a center hit there for the Wildcats. We've got, looks like Ava teeing this one up. So Ava did a good job in that last, um, when she shot a goal and came off a horse, she's trying to shoot for two, which is the right thing to do, but you can't shoot through a horse. So sometimes you have to just go around, even though the goal's where you want to shoot, you might have to go around the, the long way around to get to there. There you go. It's Knackers. She's going to put it into the corner. She was trying to wrap it all the way around to goal. Didn't quite get the angle in the corner, though. It's going to be stolen away here by Reynolds. Boo, her shot goes off the corner as well. Bounces back to her center field. Look at that. She's backed up by Kennedy. Nicely done there. Kennedy gives her that ball right back. She's going to leave it behind there, though. Taylor Knackers not able to get that horse turned around on the boards. She's got Kennedy coming in behind. Kara Kennedy steals that ball right back for AM. Rebound pops out towards center field, and Josie Dorsey is there. Dorsey, again, trying to turn in front of the right-of-way. There we got another whistle on the play. Smart play by Grace to follow that line off the wall and, and read that rebound. Kentucky needs to make in my opinion, bigger shots. They're, they're making back shots, but they're not big angled back shots. And Texas a and is doing a great job just reading those back shots and picking them up. But this is a good job. Grace went right up the line. Let everyone know that she knew that was hers. Yeah, nicely done. I'm seeing A&M just a little bit quicker to the plays than UK so far. UK's making the right plays when they get there. Here comes Taylor Knackers to put it back in. Knackers hits it off to the left corner there. She's looking for Ava. Ava gets cleared out there by Reynolds. Reynolds takes that ball back for a &M, gets it turned back around. Reynolds bringing it down to the wall. Bad bounce, leaves it behind here. She's followed up by Josie. Josie Dorsey trying to work her way past Taylor Knackers here. We're going to have a whistle on that one. I think that was Josie again. Just sliding in front. So Josie's got to just be a little more patient. We'll see what they call. Yeah. Taylor and the rest of the UK girls doing a really good job of pushing the right of way just enough to get the whistles here. Yes, we'll see what this is. They're moving closer to their goal. They were knocking on the door. But I agree with you. I think Texas A&M is just, just a tad quicker to the plays, and, and that's um, resulting in them winning more of the write-offs as well. All right, there you go. Balls in place. Taylor Knackers to approach for UK. Penalty four. Shoots to goal. 
It's going to be knocked down there by Reynolds. Accurate shot. The Reynolds is there to take it out of the goal mouth here. Oh, she's met on the play by Grace Beck. Look at that. Grace steals it away. Shoots. Oh, my goodness. Great play there by Beck, but she couldn't finish it. It's going to be Kara Kennedy to pull it out. Save the day there for AM. Take off. Kennedy on the run, switching to the offside. Keeps that ball alive. It's on the board still. Leaves it behind now. There goes the back shot. And it's going to be picked back up by Josie Dorsey. Dorsey met on the play by Nunes. Nunes snipes that ball back for UK, but it's backed away once again by AM. Here comes Reynolds to pick it up on the boards. Reynolds gets it done. There you go. Texas A&M, every opportunity they get, they're getting it done. Yeah, they are. That was a heartbreaker. They, Kentucky really pushed hard down their other end, had that opportunity, and just overrode that that opportunity. So as um, you saw Taylor say in the interview, they've got to make those goals when they have the chance. They've got to get it in there. This team's too good to squander any opportunity to score against. Absolutely. So we had a two-point shot there just wide to the left side for AM. It's going to be Reynolds to get back to it here, try to get it turned back around to the boards. Olivia gets it done on the near side now. Ball pops back out. Lucky break for Kentucky. Knacker is not able to get a hold of it, though. Here comes Ava to take it back for UK. Ava, ball's kicked by horse, overrides. Now here comes Kara Kennedy to wind up, shoot the back shot at the goal. It's just wide to the left side, and it's... Looks like that was Beck to clear it out. But there we go. Kara Kennedy's going to pick it back up, turn it around for AM once again. Kennedy hooked by Grace Beck. Nicely done there by Beck to get the hook and the back shot. Clear out of danger there for UK. Pass it off to Ava Nunes. Nunes on the boards now. She's going to clear out the man for Taylor Knackers. Knackers gives it back to her on the boards. Josie Dorsey gets the horse, spun back around, gets there, but picks up a whistle. I think that was a delayed whistle. I'm guessing it was delayed whistle against. Josie for coming in in front when um, Kentucky had the line along the wall there. So Josie just tried to turn into this play right here. Uh, yeah, she needed to give him one play there. Yeah. So far, Kara and Olivia, I don't think either one of them has fouled. So Josie just needs to clean it up a little bit and not give Kentucky these kind of unforced error opportunities. I will say, though, she's making a lot of good plays for him, yes, too. Yes, yes, she we is. We got a four here for UK. Taylor Knackers puts it wide to the left side. All right, we're back. We've got an injury timeout there. We had Reynolds come off there. I believe she's okay. She had knocked the ball in. Defending player came in, just cut her off in the front. Horse tripped. And I'm waiting to make sure she's getting mounted back up and everybody's good here. And I'm sure the staff, all the II staff is... While, while the EMT's checking out Boo and make sure she's okay. For those of you who don't know, Olivia's nickname is Boo, and it's very hard for us to call her Olivia. Um, but uh, So they'll check her out. But uh, Allie Davidge and Emily Dewey and Beth Supik, who are on the ground, they are running this tournament. Um, we'll be checking out the horse and making sure that it's okay to continue. This string is from... Um, Ola Polo, 
Texas A&M bringing all their swag to put on them, but they are from Atta and Olivia Alonso. And I got a chance to play some of their horses um, last summer in a tournament up at Brandywine. My horses weren't fit enough and, and came up and rented from them. They've been running the polo school at Brandywine Polo and doing a great job, super, just really nice people and, and a nice bunch of horses. And I rented horses for them and played in an arena tournament up there and had a great time. In fact, I played, I think I played the gray horse that Taylor's on, Moo. So they're really great. They they brought three strings of horses for this for this women's tournament. I just I just got a comment. I just got a text from Danny Shiraga, who of course is the king of II Polo, saying he said, "Too bad these kids don't have to buy a case of beer every time they fall off because we'd have a year's supply over the last two weekends," <laughs> which is pretty true. We had it. We had some un, unplanned dismounts out at the Division Two Championship in Los Osos, California, last week. Nothing serious. Just people just popping off. Horse, you know, just nothing. No one got hurt. Just popping off here and there. Um, but it it was got to be a little a little ridiculous. But um, so that was a great tournament. We're thrilled to have the Division Two um, Championship giving a chance for these teams that are just in a little, little, you know, just a lower tier level of playing. Maybe they've got kids that didn't play in high school coming and learning their polo at college or they're a smaller club, but they just don't have the, the skill level um, or the resources to play kind of at this level. So we, um, and Clyde Waddell was the kind of, he, he really pushed, Lou Lopez pushed, um, to try and give a chance for these other teams to have a chance to have a competitive national championship that they could play for. So um, in the past, all these teams played against each other. They went to regionals. And of course, the, these top teams, these division one teams now um, would win the regionals and then go on to nationals. So the, the lesser teams didn't have kind of anything to, to call their own. So it's been a great success. This is our third year of doing it. And congratulations to the Colorado State University women and the Cornell men who won their respective tournaments last week. They were both close games. Colorado State over Grossmont College on the women's side and Cornell over Georgetown, which is a new team or a re... I think it's been a team before, but uh, back in action. So that's fun to see. And Megan Judge's facility out there is just it's such a beautiful setting you got the mountains on one side you're 10 minutes from the ocean and she she goes out of her way to get you know take horses down to the beach so kids can ride on the beach and it's just you know it's there's nothing wrong with it at all it's a great great spot to host a tournament she does a great job with all of her teams her kids her horses um and a great facility so it was a really fun week and really quick here, for anybody concerned, Boo is all good. She's mounted back up, getting warmed up again to kick off the game. Boo is extremely popular here in the Facebook comments. We've got, I'm counting, eight comments cheering on Boo. Shout out Boo from Bloomfield Farm. Will and Tab Orthwine running the Skidmore program over there. We've got Barnes Cole. That's her Sarah uncle. Sarah Thompson. I see Hannah Reynolds is watching. Shout out Hannah as well, her sister. Diane McCleary says, go boo. JC Millen, Tab Orthwine. Again, Texas A&M fans, huge in the comments here. And boo is by far the most popular player so far. All right, so we're all mounted back up. I think we're about ready to kick off. We're just waiting for the call from our umpire. So we got a yellow card you can see. And that one is going to go against Taylor Knackers. She's the one who came in, sort of hit Boo, Boo with that uneven ride off that caused her horse to go down. And that's going to result in a penalty too here for AM. I think that's appropriate. You get the yellow, it's at the other end of the arena, but you've got to, you've got to, um, you know, that's a very dangerous play. So they've got to 
good chance to score on this penalty too. Kara Kennedy, just wide to the left. Both teams having a little bit of trouble from the penalty line here. We've got Grace to pick it back up for UK. Grace Beck takes it down to the 25, takes her time. Love to see it. Surveys the field there for a second, winds up, fires the pass forward. Picked up there by Knackers. Taylor for UK, followed up by Grace. Ball stolen away. Kara Kennedy gets it back for a &M. Nicely done, takes it down to the boards now. Kennedy tapping, tapping, tapping. She's got Knackers on her left side. She's going to go ahead and accelerate here, try to work her way into the corner. Shoots to goal. It's off to the left side wide. There goes that 30-second horn. Taylor Nackers gets back to it now for UK. Flips it out. Kara Kennedy takes it away. She's going to get caught on that one. Yeah, I think Kara just made the ride off and slid in front a little bit. But I would also say I, I know Taylor did whatever happened um, when she got the yellow card. She is the nicest, kindest person in the world, and I'm sure she did not mean to... Uh, to slide in front of Boo and, and cause that cause oh, yeah, that totally, to happen. Totally bad luck there. If you watch it, she didn't she didn't even make contact with her. She was just trying to get over to the other side of her and just unfortunately the speeds were such that the, the horse's front and back legs just caught each other. Yeah. Definitely not a malicious ride off or anything no, like that. No. So Kentucky needs to just take a breath here. And See if they can get another one on the board. Texas A&M really dominating most of the plays here. And Kentucky's not doing anything wrong. Like you said, they're just just a, just a half a second slower. I like how Grace Beck controls the field here. Leaves that ball behind, though. It's going to be Knackers to back it back to goal again. Off to the right side. Grace is there. Come on. Grace flips it off to goal. It's just wide to the right. Here comes Ava to follow her up. Ava not able to get it in. Looks like Taylor got it done there at the end. Yeah, there you go. It's Taylor Knackers. I believe she got it done before the final horn sounded. I guess we'll find out when we return. That's going to do it for Chucker number two. We'll be right back. You're watching USPA Polo Network. You can see Taylor Kennedy. I'm a senior studying chemical engineering at Texas A&M University. There definitely is a lot of extra pressure to repeat and try to do it again from last year because we weren't expecting to do it last year. So now I feel like there's a lot of weight on our shoulders to try to do it again this year. I think when Olivia made that back shot uh, two-pointer and me and Josie both turned on it and I remember yelling at her to let it roll in and then they called it a two. And I think that brought us within like two goals of UVA. So it was pretty surreal. <laughs> I remember almost crying Olivia when she went up to take like the last shot uh, she said, like, when or lose, like, if this goes in, I love y'all. I'm glad I did this with y'all. And I just remember crying. And then me and Josie, like, went to the side. And I think we held hands when Olivia took that shot. So it was pretty crazy. I think uh, in the indoor, we play a little different. I mean, Josie and Olivia grew up playing in the indoor arena. And so we just want to make sure we play our game and not their game. And then really get to learn the horses, too, because we have two Ola strings. And hopefully we'll have two Ola strings later on, too. It's the worst just watching people play and then like not knowing like and I know I was gonna play on Friday but then it's still sitting around waiting and like watching people play I'm like oh I want to play I'm ready to play I want to go but uh, working the games keeps us like pretty active by the time we get home at the end of the night we're tired like we've been walking around all day we're still around horses we get to ride every day so it's still pretty good <laughs> probably so our arena got redone over winter break and it's a little too deep to play practices in. Um, it's kind of like a rodeo arena. And so every time we've wanted to practice, we've had to drive down to Houston. With the rig, it's like an hour and 45. So every Monday and Friday, we take 11 horses, which is all we can fit in our trailer. And we're gone from like 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. twice a week. So that's definitely been our biggest challenge. And we have to do it because we want to practice. So probably the friends I mean the kids I, or the girls I played with and boys I played with in Houston I mean we were all lifelong friends uh, and even the girls I played with at A&M a lot of them played in Houston and so our friendship followed into our college careers too
Welcome back to the USPA Polo Network. If you're just joining us, you're watching the Division I Women's National Intercollegiate Championship Semifinals, Texas A&M taking on University of Kentucky, Wildcats versus Aggies. We've got, we're just about to kick off Chucker number three. We've got six to one on the board in favor of A&M. It's been A&M most of the way, but UK has had their chances to score and just has had some bad luck right around the goal. So this Chucker is on their own horses. We'll see what um, they can get accomplished on their own, on their own ponies. Yeah, they really are playing well. They're just struggling to, to capitalize on their opportunities. We're back. It's going to be Ava Nunes to try to turn it around. It's going to be stolen away by Kennedy there for AM. Kara Kennedy pounds it off to the boards. Ava gets back to it. Nunes gets the back shot off towards center field. She's looking for, jo for Grace Beck, but Josie's there to steal it back. Dorsey gets it turned back around, takes it straight to goal. Lisa behind right in front. There's Grace Beck to capitalize and steal it back for UK. Nicely done there. She's going to drop the hammer and try to run it. Grace Beck. Leaves that ball behind. She's followed up there by Knackers. Taylor Knackers shoots to goal. That would be two, but there's not quite enough on it to get there. Josie Dorsey, nicely done, clears her out and takes that ball out of danger there for AM. Dorsey passes it forward to Kara Kennedy. Kennedy not able to get there. Ball's left behind. There goes Grace with a back shot back to the boards. Looks like Kennedy will be the first one to get it turned around, read it, and take it back. She doesn't get a hold of the back shot, though. Ava's there to capitalize. Ava pulls it out back to her offside, goes to goal here. Look at that, cleared out there by Boo. Boo Reynolds now takes off, running to goal on the near side, pounds it off into that left corner. She looks like she's going to wind up for a next shot here. Boo doesn't quite get the shot she needed. Rebound pops out. Ava's there to pick it up for UK. Ava gets it turned back around and takes off again. Here is Taylor Nackers to pass it back to Ava. Ball's backed away there by Reynolds. Josie Dorsey gets there, turns it back around there for a and Dorsey now accelerates down to goal. Ava Nunes catches up, hits her from the left side. Dorsey's unfazed there, flips it back to the center. Ava wins the ride off, gets it back for UK. Nicely done there. Ava Nunes takes it out of danger, cleared out by Reynolds. Reynolds not able to get the back shot. There we go. We have a whistle. Good start to chucker number three. A lot of running this chucker, a lot of action. Yeah, that was a nice couple minutes of polo back and forth. Everyone paired up nicely. And obviously, Kentucky feeling a little more confident on their own horses. They know them. I want to know who Ava is riding there. It's an interesting physique. Yep. Look at that little horse. That horse is hilarious looking. Oh, so we have, I think, a blue pushing someone into the right away. Because this is going in favor of Texas A&M. All right. Penalty four from the 25-yard line. Ball's teed up. Looks like Josie will be approaching. Josie. Knocked down there by Grace Beck. Nicely done there. Beck saves the day. Met on the play by Josie again. Josie Dorsey. She's got a whistle on that one. Yeah, I thought she might actually get away with that. She was pretty pretty on it, but it's pretty hard to meet perfectly on a situation like that. I'm sure University of Kentucky would like to shout out to all the polo players that donated these horses to their program. They all look great. Yeah, really good-looking string for sure. The kids really appreciate it. Oh, I really like that horse that Ava's on. It's a tank. It's a tank, exactly. Steamroller. So Kentucky definitely generating more offense, and I feel like they're more, you know, just more comfortable, able to win more ride-offs on these horses. So let's see if they can continue it and try and reduce this spread. Grace. Passes it to Nunes here. Ball pops back out on the wall. And looks like Grace is going to follow it up, pick it back up again for Kentucky. Grace taking it towards center field, overrides there. Taylor does as well. It's flipped away. Grace is going to get back to it. Grace Beck getting it turned back around now for the team in blue, taking it down into the corner. She's got Olivia on her right side. She's going to leave that ball behind. Josie's there to capitalize, turn it back around for AM. Dorsey now takes off running. Josie, she's on a breakaway run here for Texas. Josie Dorsey shoots the goal. It's just wide to the right side into the corner here. 
She's got Taylor Knackers all over here. Josie works her way around to the inside of Taylor. Nicely done. And here comes Reynolds to follow that up. Olivia leaves it right in front of goal. It's knocked out of danger there. Here comes Knackers to pull it out. Taylor not able to get a mallet on it. Kara Kennedy's there to take it back for AM, try to get it turned back around here. Kennedy back shot to goal. Taylor's the first one to read it here for UK. Taylor leaves it behind. Picked up by Olivia. Olivia Reynolds, she's going to get the wall here and try to walk it all the way in. Nicely done there. Smart play. Reynolds on the boards. Let's Ava come in there. Ball popped back out. Not able to get there. Here comes Taylor Knackers. Nicely done to pick that ball back up for UK. Take it out of danger. That was a nail biter there for a second. Knackers leaves it behind. Just followed up by Grace Beck. Grace Beck. Hits it down to the boards and leaves it behind as well. Ava Nunes coming in. Josie Dorsey. Sorry, that was a back shot from Boo Reynolds. Off to Kara Kennedy. Kennedy receives the pass. Pounds it off to goal. Just wide to the left side in the corner. Kennedy's going to override. Followed up here by Dorsey. Josie controlling that ball. Looking for a clean shot on goal. Winds up. Shoots. And I think she got that one done for a and Josie doing a great job to shut this horse down and take her time to to wait for the Kentucky player to clear and give her a clear shot at goal. It's a nice horse. Yeah, very patient play too. Ball's back in play. Here comes Dorsey. Josie on the wall, shoots to goal. Gets back to it here. She's hooked on the play. Followed up by Kennedy. Kara had the wall there. She's in the red zone now. Shoots to goal, gets it done. Goal number eight on the scoreboard for AM. Strong third chucker for him. Yes, it is. With these short chuckers, you've really got to get in there and do it as much as you can in the five minutes on, especially if on these horses that they know. They've got to try and make uh, Kentucky's got to do as much as they can. Yeah, problem is a and liking these horses just as much exactly. as Exactly. Kentucky- I'm wondering if Josie's on the horse that Taylor talked about in her, um, in her interview that she liked so much, Luna, because it certainly looks like a lovely horse and she's getting a lot done on it. Yeah, the game is moving fast, too. All right, ball's back in play. We've got Kennedy to receive the pass, take it to goal here through the corner, leaves it behind. Ball's kicked forward. Did that one go in? Nope, looks like it didn't. It's back back across the goal, picked up here by Taylor Knackers. Knackers on the near side, clears it into the corner here. Gets back to it, leaves it behind now. Grace Beck is there. Not able to pull it out from under her horse, but Josie Dorsey can. Josie gets it turned back around, takes it to goal. There goes the final horn. She's out of time. That's going to do it there for chucker number three. AM coming out strong, eight to one on the board. We'll be right back after a quick break. You're watching the USPA Polo Network. Vasquez, I'm the coach for the University of Kentucky Polo teams. I don't know. I mean, I think it's just a lot, obviously, you know, being in Kentucky, you know, horse country, you know, I mean, it's just a beautiful, actually a beautiful place to be, you know, and I think that that in itself attracts a lot of kids, you know, to come to the school. And plus, we have a lot of good polo there. And, you know, and, you know, we're, we're trying to become one of those schools like UVA. And I think we're, well, I don't know what we'll get there, but I think we're trying to get to the point where, like, be like one of those schools, you know, there's just like a, you know, a powerhouse of polo, you know, they've been for a long time. So we're, that's, that was my goal when I started the program, you know, to make it a powerhouse. And I think, you know, we're getting there <laughs> slowly but surely. I think we need to work a little bit more like on our set plates. I think our set plates were a little um, a little sloppy at the beginning. I think we got a little bit better towards the end. Uh, you know, I think overall, you know, they played very well as a team. I think when you may perhaps back each other up a little bit more, you know, and maybe use the walls a little bit more than, than we did, I think we got a little bit relaxed, you know, in that regard. But uh, I mean, overall, they played well. But I think, you know, to beat, you know, a national champion team, you know, you're going to have to do a lot more than that and be a little bit more, you know. Um, more strategic and, you know, more, you know, prepare. Oh, I think it's huge. I mean, I think if anybody's out there, hey, donate us some horses, we need some. Uh, but it's so important to have our own horses. I think our horse, I mean, our, I mean, as, as we know, as polo players, you know, I mean, the horse is everything. You can't play polo without a horse. And, you know, with the confidence that our horse, that the horse gives you, that you know, it's just, I mean, it, it just elevates your game. And, you know, you don't have to worry about the horse. You just play, you know, and which is, you know, which is one of the difficult things here at I, I polo. You have to play horses you've never played. And, you know, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge in itself, you know. And, but, it, you know, it does make you a better ride. You know, 
I mean, I think it has a tremendous value. I think there's nothing, I mean, it's, you know, kids go to school, you know, and I mean, like, we all love polo, we could play polo, I mean, I think if all of us could play polo 24-7, we would, you know, and having a, having a college program accessible to them where they can go and, you know, not necessarily, not just like, you know, get forget about school, but keep continue to play polo and continue to build relationships with, you know, with people and, and meet kids from all over the world, you know, and, you know, and it's in a setting where it's just, you know, it's just, them, you know, it, I think that's make, that makes the biggest difference, and I think that's one of the, you know, biggest attribute of college polo, honestly. You know, I love arena polo. It's just addicting. The adrenaline rush. You're not being judged. There's a score. There's a winner. There's a loser. There's not someone telling you like you lose. You either go out there and prove it, and you win the game, or you lose. I just love the horses. Like I grew up with horses and I loved spending the time at the barn. I don't know, I didn't really play normal sports in high school. So I wasn't like a soccer girl or played lacrosse. I just loved being at the barn and spending time with the horses. I started riding at a very young age. My parents would carry me in the saddle in front of them. And then it was just destiny that I'd pick up a polo mallet when I was strong enough to be able to carry one. My name is Marissa Wells. I am 27 years old. I am from Freeland, Maryland, and my home club is Marlin Farm. It got competitive when my mom added me to our interscholastic team in fifth grade. Um, it was very competitive, and my mom is one of the best coaches for arena polo, so as soon as I, she officially put me on the team, it was competitive. When I was younger, I was very small, and playing against older kids, it was tough, but I loved playing it, and I got really competitive, and all I wanted to do was win. But I recall being, when I was younger, anytime I'd lose a practice, I would cry, and so I would just want to work harder and harder and harder to be the best. I wanted to be the best, and I always wanted to win. I competed in interscholastics from fifth grade to my senior year of high school, and I times so three out of five and it was just great like you get to meet new people play against different teams and then depending if you want to go into intercollegiate polo which I competed at Texas A&M University I was a national finalist all four years yep so eighth grade all the way through college I was a finalist and we won two finals and it's a great program and it helps girls boys everything have my name etched on all these trophies, I'm very proud of myself and grateful and thankful to have won so many important tournaments in my life. So I do feel a part of the polo history and that's my goal, to make an impact. I hope a lot of girls look up to me and aspire to be or do what I do and play arena polo and it's, it's possible for us to be great and keep up with the boys and even as a woman. The thing I love about horses is every horse is different. And so that's a great thing about this sport too, is every like no, no two horses are the same. So you get on a horse and you have to kind of figure it out and bond with it. You, like the foundation of, ride, of polo really comes down to your riding. You have to be a strong rider and get on any horse and really bond and connect with it and figure out how to just ride it, let alone swing a mallet and score a ball off of it. There's nothing else I'd rather do. <laughs> I just, it's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like riding a, a thousand pound animal running at full speed, stopping, turning, bumping, and playing different horses. There's, there's just nothing that compares to it. So I just started bodybuilding last year. I did my first competition in March, which was super exciting. I learned a lot about nutrition and what goes into our bodies and the results that come out. Um, I am an active gym goer. I love working out and I've just seen um, my polo game improve with that strength and that addition of more muscle. So it helps a lot. And I have my diet reined in and really under control. So I know what I'm putting into my body and I know what my body feels like. All that time and dedication and hours spent in the gym and lifting puts so much confidence into me. I'm very confident when I step on that field and go in there in the arena. 
My first goal is to become 10 goals in the women's arena handicap. It's my first goal. It would mean the absolute world to me just because I've been playing arena polo my whole life. I feel like I know the arena very well. I know how to strategize. I know how to use the walls. Arena is my game and I would be honored to be 10 goals. My second goal is to build a string, hopefully this winter. I just bought a new horse last week, so I'm super excited to get back home and start working with her. But that's my goal, is to have a string of polo ponies and continue to play professionally as a female pro. I want future polo players to know that they can work hard and they can be great.
Welcome back to the USPA Polo Network. We're at the 2024 Division I Women's National Intercollegiate Semifinals, Texas A&M versus Kentucky. We've got some halftime stats here on the scoreboard. You can see T Texas A&M making 7 out of 10 shots on goal. UK making 1 out of 3. Texas A&M with 70% shooting accuracy. Take a look at the bottom, though. Throw-ins won. UK winning 8 throw-ins over A&M's four. So this really shows that UK is still in the game very much. The score doesn't necessarily reflect what we're seeing in the arena. UK, with a lot of opportunities, they're just not able to capitalize every single time. Yeah, I think that Texas A&M's, you know, staying close to them, not letting them get an open <clears throat> shot at goal. And a University of Kentucky's just got to, when they have the ball at their end, they've got to make every single goal count. And um, uh, Texas A&M's were doing a great job of, of getting to the boards a little quicker and getting that, you know, doing defensive work, getting the ball out from their end. So you can see the balls, um, even though Kentucky's won more of the throw-ins, they haven't been able to capitalize on that. So they need to do that. But I wanted to uh, make sure everyone knew there was a game uh, next Saturday, um, April 20th at 3 PM at the Palm city polo club. And that is an international match between some of our intercollegiate players here in the U.S., um, a chosen team against the Schools and Universities Polo Association, the SUPA team from the U.K. This is an annual event, and it rotates between being played in England and being played um, in the U.S. Last year, uh, the team went to England, and uh, Vlad Tereshansky, who's in this tournament this year from U University of Virginia, and Lee G. Vieira, Leah G. Vieira, who plays for the University of Virginia women's team, we'll see coming up. They played last year. But this year's team um, that's just been announced recently includes Taylor Knackers, who's on this University of Kentucky team, along with Clark Meyer, who you'll see in the finals on Sunday on the SMU men's team, Will Coors from Stanford University, and Benito Jaramillo from Cornell University. So that's a really great team to represent the U.S., um, to play that SUPA versus USA game at 3 p.m. at Palm City Polo Club um, a week from tomorrow. So anyone who's down for the meetings for the U.S. Open Finals, we'd love to see you out there um, supporting these young student athletes um, in this in this game. It should be a good game. Um, the U.K. SUPA team that's bringing over, I'm sure, is very competitive. And um, it's always good just to have that international exchange. And Liam, you've you've played in it, so you can speak a little more about it. Yeah, I played in it. I think it was 2019 in Florida as well. Great experience. Really good game. Great opportunity to meet the kids from England. Super cool to sort of discuss the similarities and differences and just get a feel for what it's like over there. I believe they're probably the only other country that has a intercollegiate polo program. Yes, and they're, I know Argentina is starting to realize the benefit of arena polo as well. Um, and we obviously we had um, a USA team go down there. So they're starting to, you know, it's starting to grow. It's such an accessible way for people to get into polo. Um, you don't need as many horses. You don't need as much space. And the one thing I like about it is you're never out of the play. In arena polo, sometimes it's so, so spread out. You can have, if you're the weaker player on the team, or if your horses aren't as good or whatever, you, you know, you don't, you don't, you're not contributing as much. And there's just no way in the arena that you can not be part of the play. You have to do something. You have to be involved and you have to contribute. All right. So we got both teams mounted back up. Looks like UK getting some warm ups in Texas A&M discussing some strategy here. We should be ready to kick off this second half in just a couple minutes yeah this texas a&m team just has both teams have a lot of experience but i feel like um olivia boo reynolds has played she's played in lots of different places i believe she spent some summers um with uh memo and megan gracita out at their ranch playing so she's just really a very seasoned campaign or really for her age all right there we go we're back in play 
There goes. Care to pick it up? We got a whistle stopping the play. Well, we got. Oh, look at that. That's Francesca Fellhaber, not Kara Kennedy. We got a yeah. substitution there for A&M. I did not even notice. That's great. So we didn't have a chance to talk about Francesca, but Fellhaber is a pretty familiar name for anyone around Arena Polo, especially in the Southwest. And her cousin, uh, Niklas, is playing for the UNT team. So Francesca, who has played a lot of Arena Polo with the Rancho Naranjo Polo Club, and is really fun to watch play. I got to watch her play at Nationals last year. But the reaching call going against her. And we're back. It's off into the corner here. It's going to be Bellhopper to get back to it there for AM. Francesca passes it through the corner looking for Josie Dorsey. Dorsey picks it up, takes off. Now she's on a breakaway for AM. Josie hits it off into that left corner. She's going to check down, switch to the near side, use that wall to bring that ball to goal. Ava all over here on the right side, but there you have it. Josie on the wall. We've got a whistle on the play there. Looks like we had a sandwich behind the play. So we'll see this gray horse of Dardos named Tor Torquesa. I think it's turquoise, Tur basically turquoise with an A on the end of it. But looks like Josie's getting along great with that nice looking horse, but UK getting a spot hit for this sandwich behind the play. Francesca just got a little stuck and got a little pushed in there. A little bit of a major, major clumping up down in that corner. Yeah, so there you go. Grace Beck to hit it back into play. Down to the boards. Oof. Didn't get a hold of it the way she needed to there. It's going to be backed away by A&M. Here comes... Olivia to get a little back shot off to Josie Dorsey. Dorsey clears out the man, gets it turned back around. Now winds up, hooked on the play. Ball's left behind once again. Fellhaber wins the ride off there, gets to that ball, but leaves it behind. It's going to be stolen back by Taylor Knackers here for UK. Knackers going to goal, winds up, shoots just off to the left side. Here comes Josie Dorsey to steal it back once again for AM. Dorsey leaves it behind on the boards. Fellhaber's there to back her up. Fellhaber put a lot on it, but that rebound was just such that it got left right in front of her not enough on it and we got a sword fight here back for possession this can be one out by ava nunez nunez going to goal ball goes off boo flips back there goes grace beck to get back to it there we go goal number two on the board uk starting off this second half strong good for them grace is so fun to, to watch play she's so passionate about it gets so pumped up you can see her so excited she's made both of their goals She's had so many near misses in front of the goal as well. There she goes, leaves it back for Taylor Knackers. Knackers shoots and scores. Look at that. I think that was one point, but what a goal there. Grace Beck and Taylor Knackers to follow her up for UK. Great play out of the throw-in. They've won these two throw-ins, and now they're getting something done on it. There goes Dorsey to pick the ball up. She's got Knackers all over her here. Nicely done there. Taylor Knackers gets that ball back from her. Strong horse she's on, clears her out. Backs it down to the boards. Reynolds is there to pick it up. Take it back for AM. Olivia Reynolds. Switching to the near side now. Going into the corner here. Reynolds. Reynolds still with possession. Taking it from right to left towards goal. Flips it in. There you go. Reynolds answering those two goals from UK with one for AM. Yeah, nice patience. She sort of sat behind the pack there on the wall. There was a lot of people sort of having trouble getting their horses going. So she just waited for that to clear and then took advantage of that. There you go. We're back. It's Josie Dorsey to pick it up out of the throw and take it down to the boards. Dorsey flips it forward, goes back from right to left, tries to get back to it, gets it done. Josie still trying to take it to the boards. Grace back all over her here. Josie Dorsey gets away from her there. Knackers gets a back shot. We got no whistle there. And there, they're going to catch a whistle on that one. Yeah, I think... Grace went in there to make the hook, and I'm not sure if Taylor was able to pull off in time to avoid a sandwich. That's a little replay of Taylor's nice goal. All right, so it's looking like a penalty two here to go in favor of Texas A&M. Texas A&M's been sort of rotating who's taking these shots. I think it just depends on what horse they're on and how they're feeling. I haven't seen one person taking all of them at all. Smart for everybody to be in practice on penalties for sure, especially with horses you don't know. Here comes Reynolds. Gets it done. There you go. Tenth goal on the board for AM. 
This looks like a really nice string of horses from Dardo. And we're still waiting for a clean lineup there. Ball's back in play. It's going to roll all the way through to the opposite boards. Here comes Reynolds to clear out the man, get to that ball, pound the near side back shot back towards center field. It's off of the umpire. I think it's still in play, though. Yep, there you go. Fellhaber picks it back up for AM. Fellhaber cleared out there by Grace Beck. Beck with the pass up to Taylor Knackers. Knackers takes off to goal. Taylor winds up. Can't get a hold of that bouncing ball. Keeps it alive, though. Just couldn't get a full swing off there. Now gets back to it on the near side. Cleared out there by Fellhaber. Fellhaber gets the back shot just enough so that Josie Dorsey can pick it up. Horse steps over it. Can't get a hold of it. Turn back around now by Ava. Ava for University of Kentucky. Going down to the boards. Trying to get her mallet off to the near side. Looks like it's stuck there. Not able to get her mallet on it. It's Taylor Knackers to help her out. Back her up. Get it turned back around there for UK. Knackers works her way past Josie Dorsey. She's trying to get into the corner now. Taylor tapping, tapping, tapping. Dorsey all over her. Not giving an inch there. Josie steals it away. Nicely done there. Josie now leaves it behind for Fellhaber on the boards. Fellhaber, a little bit too much of a rebound off the boards. Pops out towards center field, and we have a whistle. Everyone fighting hard for that ball. Let's see what they call here. But I think Ava got stuck. Anyway, anytime you see someone backing out of a play, it's, it would make you think that they are not where they want to be. Yeah, unfortunate that Fellhaber wasn't able to get it down the boards there. Yep, so spot hit for Texas A&M. Ava has improved so much in the last few years. I've been watching her play. I've played with her. Um, and she just, her, her whole entire game has, has really stepped up a notch in the last couple of years. All right, look at that. Taylor Knackers. Gets that ball back for UK. Gets it turned back around. Really nice play there from Taylor. Now she's on the boards on the near side, taking it off into the corner. There goes the 30-second horn. She's got Josie Dorsey all over her here. Josie clears away. Let's Fellhopper get in on the wall. Nice communication there from the AM girls. Now we are kind of stuck here. Taylor Knacker is trying to work her way through the crowd. Ball pops forward. Olivia's horse kicks it out. Here comes Ava. We're going to have a whistle on the play there. Yeah, so let's see if I think that the umpires are waiting to see if let's see what happens here. Getting a little, little sticky here in this chucker. A little, so much defense. Yeah. So I think they're, they were trying to uh, blow a delayed whistle to see if um, Boo could clear out of Taylor's way. And when the ball came off of her horse and that, oh. Oh, they got to make those. All right, Jersey Dorsey there to pick it up and clear it out for A&M. Dorsey, met on the play there by Taylor, gets past her. Taylor gets away with that, nicely done there. Josie gets around her, though, and there goes the final horn. That'll do it for Chucker number four. We got two more coming right up. We're going to go to commercial. We'll be right back. You're watching the USPA Polo Network. Mike McClary, coach of the Texas A&M Polo team. Well, quite a bit. You know, it's a pleasure to get two years in a row. And I've got some students that would love to get four years in a row, and we're not going to give up till we hit that. Well, everybody improved just a little bit on everything they do. So all, overall, we're a little stronger team than we were last year. And that's the main thing about intercollegiate and interscholastic polo. Every time you go to the arena, you come out a little better player than you went in. <laughs> Discipline and, and dedication is what we're asking for.
got into Wellington, Florida market because of the number of horses were there. So we decided that we should also sell the hay there. And uh, we met some of the polo people there and um, we've become very friendly with the polo community because the, uh, they require such a, a great quality hay and which is what we want to provide. At Palm Beach Equine Clinic, we know your horse is not only a superior athlete, but a part of your family. With more than 30 veterinarians, four board certified surgeons, and the most technologically advanced equine imaging suite in the country, our team has all the skill sets required for accurate diagnosis and successful treatment. Palm Beach Equine Clinic is committed to providing exceptional service and care for both patients and owners. Visit equineclinic.com today to make us a part of your team. All right, welcome back to the USPA Polo Network 2024 D1 Women's National Intercollegiate Championship Semifinals. We're headed into our fifth chucker out of six. Texas A&M University taking on University of Kentucky here at the Virginia Polo Center in Charlottesville, Virginia. Both teams just getting mounted back off to kick off this next chucker. And this chucker there on the Ola, Ola Polo string. See that little paint pony there, Daisy. So you'll see, uh, I don't know if any of you noticed that are watching that um, the II staff is coming up to each player after they get off their horse and asking them what score they gave that horse. So every horse gets a score between one and 10 from every player that played it. And then that, those results are tabulated to determine best playing pony and best playing string. Very coveted awards by anybody who who loves polo and loves the horses and it's an interesting way of doing it because instead of having an observer choose the best playing pony which is how it is in in most tournaments um the players themselves are scoring these horses um and you know if they don't know a, a lot of them don't know the horses and you know we we try and have them give them a fair score as possible with with one being something a horse that maybe you never want to get on again um, to, uh, which there's usually not many of those. So usually it's between a, a five and a 10, 10 being you did, were able to do everything. I always think of a really good horse as one that I can play and I don't have to think about the horse. I just am playing the game and, you know, the horse is just doing whatever I need it to do. I'm not having to think about riding it. That's my, that's my favorite type. And we did have a substitution also this chucker. It looks like uh, Boo has sat down. So Kara has come back in. So we have Josie, Francesca, and Kara in for Texas A&M this chucker. There we go. Balls back in play. It's going to be Kara to get there. Pass it off to Francesca. Fellhover turns around, picks it up. Doesn't quite get a hold of it. It's going to be backed away there by Ava. Ava with a back shot pass off to... Looks like that's Grace Beck. Beck leaves it behind on the boards here. She's followed up by Nunez. Ava on the run leaves it behind as well. Here comes Grace to follow that play once again for UK. Grace Beck on the run, on the near side, working her way now from left to right back towards the goal, just off to the left side. Stolen away now. Looks like it's Kara Kennedy to get it out for A&M. Kennedy takes off here. 
Takes it down to the board. She's trying to outrun Taylor Knackers here. Shoots from right to left at the goal just wide. Goes back to it on the near side. Doesn't get a hold of it. Kicked away by the horse. Here comes Fellhaber with the back shot. Josie Dorsey there to try to pick it up and get it to goal. She's got Beck there to clear her out and go to the near side. Nicely done there by Beck. Good defense. Josie gets uh, back to it and scores. Grace uh, Beck doing a great job there in the goal mouth, but Josie got it done eventually. Yeah, Grace turned around, tried to get that ball out of there, and I think Grace actually hit it into a horse's leg, and that's it bounced back into the goal. So she's hustling to try and get that ball, and it just takes a takes a Texas A&M bounce. Just, yeah, bad luck there. There goes a the back shot from Kara, knocked back down by Beck. Grace Beck, she's hungry here, trying to get into the goal, hooked on the play, ball's left behind. Here comes Dorsey with a little back shot, and we're going to have a whistle there. Ava got it back, though. Yep, those rotations in the corners being so important because the the right away is following the direction of the ball when that ball's against the wall. It's always good to have someone coming around behind. And so you see Ava was just coming around on that paint horse, rotating around, dropped in after this ball got sort of backed by Josie, but then came off a horse and draw the foul. So that's good opportunity. All right, good yeah. call there. We got a two. She was in the corner. She was about to go into the corner, so would have been a very high probability of scoring there for UK. Yep, and I believe Taylor's missed her last one, so she needs to just settle down on this one. There she goes. There we go. Taylor Knackers, goal number four for UK. That should give her some confidence going into the next one. Like, I, I know I can do this. There she goes. She got out of the throw again. Ooh. Oh, horse is popping up. She's not able to get that full swing to shoot for two, unfortunately. So it's going to be Josie Dorsey to steal it back. Dorsey with a tail shot. She's looking for Kara here. Kara's going to be hooked on the play, flips it off to the boards, looking to get it back to Fellhaber. Or sorry, that was Kara there. We got a whistle on the play. I cannot tell the difference between those helmet colors. It is pretty tricky. I am colorblind as well. It just looks like, <laughs> oh dear. I don't know. I, I, I've been taught that that's purple, but they both look the same to me. <laughs> all right, there's the replay. Ball flips out to the boards. Fellhaber's all over it there. Are they going to catch her for improper use of the mallet, Cindy? I. Let's see what they've got. Yeah, I think they're calling her. She reached across. Another. Nope. They're giving it to her. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So it must be a blocking the right away against Kentucky. That was a tough one to see. There was so much traffic in that corner. There's Kara Kennedy to hit it off into the corner, looking for Josie Dorsey. It's going to be Ava with a little back shot picked back up there by Dorsey again for AM taking it down to the corner. Grace Beck coming in. Look at that. Dorsey works her way around to the inside of her. Super smart there to go around the backside of the horse. Now flips it off to goal. Put it through. Josie Dorsey, goal number 12. Nice play by Josie. Just taking her time, working it to the, to the boards, and then not missing that all important flip shot. Looks like we had a little. Texas A&M tried to get some tack fixed in the back, but ball gets thrown in anyhow. There we go. Josie Dorsey shooting for two right off the bat, just wide to the right side. It's going to be Grace Beck to get back to it. Grace Beck gets it turned around there on the wall. Nicely done there. Grace taking to the corner now. Override stolen back here by, looks like that is Kennedy for A&M. Kara going to goal, hooked on the play by Beck. Beck got there, nicely done. Left it, left it behind. Here's Ava Nunes to follow it up. Try to flip it across the goal mouth and out of danger. Couldn't get there. Grace Beck can, but we've got a whistle. There might have been a sandwich there. Let's see what we have. Take a look at the replay. There goes Ava. Yeah, if maybe there was. It was a split second of a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what they called. All right. So we're going to have a spot hit, it appears, for UK.
And do we have a coaching timeout? Is that what this is? Uh, we might have a some sort of... Grace is riding towards the gate, which makes me think that something needs to be repaired or adjusted. So we'll see what, what that is. But there's Taylor Knackers, and she's really excited um, to get to play in this super match. Um, the team was chosen on not only their playing ability, then we had to stay within a certain handicap limit, but just also how well they're going to represent um, the USPA and, you know, kind of their sportsmanship and horsemanship um, and all that. And she's just the most soft-spoken, you know, easygoing person, but you, then she's a fierce competitor as well. But she, she'll, the whole team will represent really, really well. I'm excited to see them play. I'll be down there for the meetings and um, I'm going to announce that game. And we're really um, thankful that Joey Casey at Palm City has agreed to allow us to have it there because it'll be close by where everyone is um, near National Polo Center to come and watch these kids. Yeah, we've seen both Grace, or sorry, both Taylor and Clark killing it so far in Nationals. So here we are. We've got a spot hit. We're back in play. Ava Nunes puts it back on the field there for UK. Kate's away. Ava follows up her own shot. Nicely done to get back to it. Hits it off into the corner. Can she get the rebound? Yes, she can. Ava now with a back shot to go look at that goal of the game so far, in my opinion. What a run there from Ava. A tail shot to put it on through. Well done, Ava. That was a great play. She got it down there and to make make that make that tail shot between all those legs and get it get it into goal is fabulous. All right, ball's back on the field. We're going to have a whistle there. That's going to be reaching back against Josie. If I had to guess. It's a seven-point spread. We're in checker number five. It's not insurmountable, um, but it, you know, essentially Texas A&M has to really start making mistakes, and Kentucky has to capitalize on every opportunity they have to get this goal, this uh, score a little bit closer, but it's, it's not insurmountable. We've got two point shots. We haven't seen any two point shots yet so far today. All right, there we go. We're back. Grace puts it in, pounds it off into the corner. Grace Beck. Now horse pops up. Everybody stays on there. So luckily it looks like horses and riders are okay. And that horse checked up more than Grace was anticipating. It just sat down, yeah. sat down on its hind legs, and then slipped a little bit. And then that made um, it was a Francesca's horse, maybe. Yeah, whoever was coming in behind wasn't expecting to check that quick either. Yeah. I think everyone's okay. All right, let's go to the comments here real quick. Stephanie Crammel Subtle says, "Beautiful goal, Eva." Yeah, I got that right. Margaret Parr, nice goal. Taylor. Yeah, Taylor Knackers did score another amazing goal for UK. Megan Gracida says, we love you, boo. Hmm. There you go. Cindy, you talked about that earlier. Yep. And Margaret Power, uh, Margie Power is uh, Taylor's coach from high school. And Ava has a bit of a polo pedigree um, because her mother is a romp. And I believe her grandfather is the one that got her interested in playing polo. And she's been helped a lot through the year. She uh, lives in the D.C. area, and I know uh, Charlie Muldoon and Marisa Bianchi have been very instrumental in getting her playing and helping her out. Um, but really, I've seen a huge improvement. I played with her in the U.S. Women's Arena Handicap two years ago, and her improvement since then has just been fabulous. It's really fun to see um, these young players just, you know, from one month to the next, they can just, you know, get so much better us older folks just get a little, <laughs> we, we either stay the same or get a little bit worse each month, but, but it's just so fun to see them improve and, and also gain confidence. That's the main thing is they just gain so much confidence in their playing ability and that makes them better players because when they go to a play, they go to it a hundred percent and don't second guess themselves. So they're going to take a look at this and um, Bradley Biddle's 
looking at the replay to see if there is a foul on it since there was some a horse slipping. Um, let's see what the call is going to be. And Ava's aunt, Nancy Rompf, uh, is on the board of Virginia Polo. She's at a lot of the games when I'm down there. Very active and still supporting the polo in this area. So fun to see. And then you have, so you have this polo pedigree basically for Ava. And then you have someone like Grace Backer Taylor, who are first generation players that, you know, started playing in II and the interscholastics and sort of lucked into it. Uh, Grace was quite a good field hockey player and just sort of lived up near Kelly Wells's and got involved in it. And um, obviously was really, really good at it. And Taylor, as she said, was just taking jumping lessons at Margie Powers and said, hmm, there's Polo here too. So, and Margie's team this year, her Hillside women, uh, girls team at the high school level made it into the finals this year and then lost to Kelly Wells's team. So you see this, it's this, the cycle, you know, the cycle of life, the cycle of Polo, all these, you know, your, your opponents one day are going to be your teammates tomorrow and vice versa. So it looks like they're just going to throw the ball in. I think that's appropriate. I don't I don't think anyone did anything wrong. There you have it. It's back in play. Pops out towards the UK side. Ava's all over at Ava with a back shot to goal. That goes off the umpire. Oh, my goodness. Bad luck there. Josie Dorsey with an open back shot pass. She's looking for, I think that's Kennedy there. Car Kennedy wake, making your way from left to right towards the inside. Looking to line up a shot on goal here. We've got a whistle. I think a Ava was just kind of shading a bit and Kara couldn't get a clean shot at that goal. So I did get word from Bradley Biddle that what they did, the reason there was a throw in um, after those horses stumbled, um, it was a dangerous riding call on both players and trying to settle them down. So, so it was offsetting penalties. And that's why they threw the ball in, but this will be a, probably a three. Yep. There you go. Penalty three in favor of Texas A&M. It'll be Josie Dorsey, looks like, to approach this time. Josie, half swing, perfectly done. Look at that. That's goal number 13 on the board now for A&M. Great goal by Josie. Penalty shots, you, you've got to make your twos and threes. You just can't expect to win a game without making your twos and threes. And All right. Texas, Texas A&M has been pretty good at them. We're back in play. Ava Nunes with a back shot for UK that's going to be picked back up now by Josie Dorsey for A&M. Dorsey's shot goes off the boards, and Car Kennedy is there. Kennedy hits it off to the wall. Taylor Nackers gets a back shot for UK. Here's Josie Dorsey to pounce on it, steal it back for A&M. Dorsey overrides. Ava's there to steal it back for UK now. Ava battling hard with Kennedy here. He pushes to the near side, shoots to goal. Kara picks it back up, steals it away for AM, runs through the turn using that whole arena to get this ball turned back around. Look at that. She's going to drop the hammer here. Ava Nunes gets the hook and ball's left behind. Everyone's going to override. Looks like Grace Beck will be the first one to turn back around to it, but she's out of time. There goes that final horn of chucker number five. We've got one more five-minute chucker coming back up. Only one team will advance to the finals. We'll be right back. You're watching the USPA Polo Network. All in line and ready for the start. There is a moment in every horse race when expectation spins into realization. Oh, and I go to a perfect start. But no one's going to catch your horse. Unbelievable! And they're into the stretch! And you probably also thought to yourself, wouldn't it be even what better if I could running. truly call that racehorse my own? Wicked Strong wins it going away! Well, oh, why couldn't you?
Welcome back to the USPA Polo Network. We're back for the sixth and final chucker of this 2024 Division I Women's National Intercollegiate Semi-Final, Texas A&M versus UK. A&M with a strong lead going into this last chucker of the game. Five minutes of regulation time left. Only one team will advance to the final on Sunday. Yeah, it's a pretty big lead, but arena polo is a funny game. You never know what's going to happen. So we've got Olivia, Boo Reynolds, and Kara and Josie in for this last chugger. Francesca doing a great job while she was in, but they're putting back in these three to finish out the game. A&M back to the starting lineup, and it's going to be Josie Dorsey. Right in front of goal here, tapping, 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 takes her time here, thwarted at the last second, but Kara Kennedy's there to follow her up and hit that little open back shot to put it on through. Great follow-up by the Texas A&M team on that little, Kara, on that little chunky monkey that you pointed yeah, out little, the last one. Yeah. The little tank. All right, ball's back in. It's going to pop out, and Kennedy gets back to it. Kennedy. Makes her way off to the boards now. Takes it to the near side, trying to avoid the defender here. She's got Grace Beck on her. She's going to leave that ball. Sorry, that's Knackers on her. She's going to leave the ball behind. She's backed up by Josie Dorsey. Dorsey, ridden hard by Ava Nunes, flips it off for Taylor. Taylor out in front. Perfect play there between Ava and Taylor. Taylor's going to flip it off down to the boards, get it out of danger here. And now here comes Grace Beck to pick it back up for UK. Grace Beck on the boards, leaves it behind. Back shot from Olivia Reynolds. Olivia gets her horse back around, turns back to it. Nice horse she's on there. Olivia in the corner now in the red zone. Olivia shoots and scores. So Texas A&M just doing a little, kind of getting more out of their horses, being just a little quicker turning, getting to that play. And I do see Taylor on the horse that she mentioned, her favorite horse here, Luna. So I'm glad she's getting to play her last chucker as a senior on her favorite horse. It's always nice. Yeah, there we go. Shot on goal from Taylor. It's off into the corner. She's going to get back to it. Try to get it turned around here, but Kennedy's there to steal it back for AM. Kara Kennedy gets it turned back around, takes it off towards the opposite boards. Now she's on the run. Rebound pops out. First one to it'll be Taylor Knackers. Pick that right of way up. Try to get this ball turned back around for UK. Knackers gets it turned back around. Are they going to get her for turning there? Is that what that mm. is? That's, we'll have to see what they call. Well, that looks I like what's, what they're going to do. I thought she had changed the line earlier, but. Yeah. Oh, that's that was... right. I was not surprised she wanted to turn this ball um, on this horse and she's so confident on it. All right. Yeah. They're going to get it for turning there. All right. So we have Texas A&M to tee up what appears to be. What is this, a four? I am guessing it's going to be a four. My data is coming in slowly, so I'm a little behind. Yeah, it's a four. It's got to be. Yeah, here comes Josie Dorsey. Hits it just wide to the right. It's that rebound. Not enough on it to get all the way back to the 25. It's going to be Grace Beck to pick it back up for UK and drop the hammer here. Beck runs it down to center field, leaves it behind there. Dorsey's the first one to turn around to it. She's got Kara going for the pass already. She's going to hold on to it, line up that perfect shot. There she goes. Doesn't quite get the one she needed. It's going to be left behind. And we've got a whistle there. We'll see what they call here. At this We're stage in, in the game, you know, 10 goals with a little under three minutes to play. I mean, it's not insert, it's it's not, not doable, but I would say as a team, it's Kentucky. You just want to try and make as many positive plays as you can. I think it's three out riding into this under the stroke there. I don't think uh, Grace went in for the hook, but didn't didn't leave uh, Texas a and any room to swing. All right. So another penalty for, I believe, for A&M. Ball's in place. It's going to be Josie Dorsey to circle around and approach it here. Shout out to U.S. Polo ASSN for having all these teams looking so sharp in their jerseys and their whites. There we go. Josie just wide to the left, and it's Grace Beck to save the day. Grace Beck fires a huge pass up into that right corner. Let's see if there's a receiver. She's got Taylor Knacker's breaking for it, but 
Kara Kennedy's going to get there first and get it turned back around. Kennedy leaves it behind right in front of goal. Here comes Boo to follow her back up and clear it away. Olivia Reynolds off to the opposite wall, gets it out of the goal mouth here for AM. Now takes off. Olivia on the run up center field. Her approach is looking like it might go all the way for two points. Look at that. It's yes, rolling. It. It's good. What a goal. First two pointer of the game from Olivia Reynolds. That's a great time to score a two pointer, just to put an exclamation point on this. Well done by Olivia. She got turned quicker and made that big shot towards goal. Too bad for Taylor at the other end because she made the right play and just couldn't, again, just couldn't convert. Ava Nunes with a nice run there. And look at, look at that. She got that rebound, got it on in for Kentucky. Nicely done there from Ava. Glad to see the University of Kentucky women. They're not going to give up. They're going to fight hard to the last second and... As I said, just make it a positive, you know, make a, as much positive plays as you can. Ooh, rebound pops out towards the center of the field. And it will be Josie Dorsey to follow that right away up. Pick it back up for AM. Written hard by Grace. Look at that. Grace gets it away from her. Grace Beck on the wall, leaves it behind now. She's followed up by Taylor Knackers and now Ava Nunes. Nunes on the boards, keeping that ball away from the defender here, keeping it on the boards there on the near side. Nicely done. Ava now. Starting to run it here, leaves it behind. She's followed up by Taylor. Taylor drops it back to Grace Beck. Beck not able to get a hold of it. Turn back around now by Josie Dorsey for AM. Josie Dorsey takes off to goal here. Approach goes off to the left side. She's going to turn it around the long way here. Dorsey flipping it back to center field. Gets her pocket picked there by Beck. Grace Beck now on the run, clears it away, out of danger. Ugh, bad luck. Out of bounds. Yes, because that side of the arena has those sloping plywood boards and the other side of the arena just has the, the wall. So to make it equal on both sides, they're determining, they've determined that if it goes up that sloping side, it's out of play. So beautiful two point shot by, by Boo. Nice replay on that. So change All of right. possession here in favor of Texas A&M. There you go. Here comes Reynolds. Hits away, looking for two first time. Nicely done there by Grace Beck. She's played great defense in front of the goal, knocking these shots down. Grace Beck now leaves it behind for Taylor Knackers. Knackers takes off with it for UK. Switching to the near side, can't get a hold of it. It's Kara Kennedy to get a little back shot, but it's off of Grace Beck. Beck trying to get back to it. Makes her way past Kara. Nicely done now. Grace on the run to goal. Shoots and scores. What a perfect way to end the game there for UK. 20 seconds left on the clock. Amazing goal there from Grace Beck. That's always nice to finish, finish out, keep scoring, do the best you can. They're up and against a really tough A&M team. We're back. Ball is in play once again. Here comes Ava to pick it up for UK. Ava hits from left to right at the goal. She's out of time. There goes that final horn. So that's going to do it for this first women's semifinal of the day. Texas A&M. We'll be going to the finals. We've got our second game coming up shortly here at 1230. University of South Carolina, Aiken, taking on University of Virginia. Only one team will advance to face Texas A&M. We'll be back soon. You're watching the USPA Polo Network.